I just checked Indeed.com and found 10,867 job listings for data analysts. So why is everyone struggling to become a data analyst? Well, the truth is that although it's a tough competitive market, a lot of people are not doing the right things and applying to these jobs effectively. So in this video, we're going to cover why people are having a problem getting a job and we're going to cover 10 tips that you can use to effectively and easily jump past most of the competition because it does not have to be as difficult as it seems. Most people are not doing the right things. I'll also reveal one subtype of a data analyst where you can make great money and it's an untapped opportunity. And we're going to go into some new secret methods to land that job interview and that job process. So without further ado, let's just jump right in to tip number one. So number one, you have to understand companies are hiring based off perceived value. So while the typical job listing can get over a hundred applicants, you have to realize that a lot of these applicants are just unqualified and they're doing a lazy job and they're posting a resume, an application that is not indicative of any real value or real skills that the company wants. So if you can be empathetic to what the company wants, then you can actually cater your resume to actually go after that job. Most people are just shooting out generic resumes and a lot of the key technical skills that are mentioned in the job posting aren't even being mentioned in the resume. So you really have to make the effort of showing real value and understanding that companies are looking for people who actually have the skills necessary and not just putting up a front. So we'll cover this more in detail in another tip, but most people are not putting enough effort, tailoring their resumes and having the right skills. So, you know, think about it from the company standpoint. They don't want to hire someone and then they're like, okay, can you do this job and like build this dashboard? And they're like, uh, actually, I don't know how to do that. And then they have to fire this person uh, in, in the next two months. That's a waste of money for the company. So sure, experience matters and so forth, but um, it's not that important. So that brings us to step two, which is undervalue experience, boot camps, and certifications. These things are still useful to a degree, so still put them on your resume, still do some of them, but don't think that they're the end-all be-all that most people seem to think they are. These things are losing their value and there's still value in getting trained in all these things, but just simply saying something like, I have this certification or having, I have this skill set or I have this experience, um, it's not really as important as you think. And this is good news for people starting out who don't have that experience, but uh, just keep that in mind because I've seen, you know, having been on the hiring end of things as well, I've seen people with a lot of experience in digital marketing or agency life get, you know, passed over for a job or they get hired and then they, they get let go soon after because, you know, okay, it's helpful you have experience, but that's not the most impactful thing. Like, can you get this job done? Can you actually, let's say, use this programming language to solve this problem? and find this trend in the data, um, that's something that, you know, that's what they really want. And if you don't, if they hire you and you're like, uh, I can't do this actually, or you, know, you do a really incompetent job, you're out of luck. So point number three, realize the job market isn't as bleak as some perceive it to be. Many com complaints about the job scarcity market come from those of the majority who didn't put in any effort and then didn't get the job, and they complain loudly about it. The people who get a job, they may or may not post about it, and those people may get a few likes on social media, and then people move on. But then there's so many more people who really didn't put in the effort and tailor their resume, and they put in a half-baked resume, and of course, they fail, and like, what do you expect? Um, and so there's super vocal online and complain, and you know, the typical average person blames the world um, rather than you know, own up to their own uh, room for improvement. So that's what you hear the most. Number four, many fail to mention skills and keywords in the job posting. Now, I did mention and hint at this earlier, but 
Um, you really have to do this right. You know, the re- there's a reason why people will have, you know, certain technical skills uh, in the job posting. If SQL is there, you need to write SQL for a reason. And it's not that hard to, you know, get. There's like $30 Udemy courses that will teach you SQL from beginning to end. And so a lot of people either just like give up, don't apply when they see certain things, or they just like apply without having a bunch of skills and technical skills listed on job posting. Guess what happens? You get screened out either by a human or by the automation system when they see you don't have those keywords in your application. Number five, focus on smaller companies rather than large, big brands, especially if you're starting out. Guess what? Most people are not getting their jobs because they're shooting for the moon and applying to these recognizable big brands like a Nike, Apple, Netflix, Google, Facebook. Guess what? Those get a overwhelming amount of job applications. And frankly, um, honestly, I prefer smaller companies. You might too, because smaller companies, you have more influence, more control, more impact. Your ideas actually get picked up. You get recognized. Versus being stuck in a like 10,000 employee corporation where you're just a cog in a machine. So I really think that there's a huge opportunity in smaller companies. Don't think that it's worse because it's smaller. I think it could be better. Okay, number uh, six, build a strong portfolio. So I go into detail about this in another YouTube video you can check out. But simply put, think about it. You need a portfolio to demonstrate that you actually know what you're doing. Build projects either for other freelance clients, other people you work for for free, or your own website, and show that you can actually do all these skills that they want. Because really what the employers are oftentimes looking for is, can you actually deliver value and do this work? And they're trying to sift through all these signs that are frankly something that people can lie about, um, whether, you know, to varying degrees. And a portfolio is something that you can show a bit more irrefutable proof. I mean, you could still lie a bit. So, you know, but it's less likely that, you know, when you actually built it from beginning to end. So really, you know, it's not about lying to the employer. It's, it's about actually like developing these skills and finding real ways of proving that you have these skills in irrefutable ways. And by doing that, um, you eliminate their worst fear, which is they hire you and then like you don't know what you're doing and then you're both wasting time and you're incompetent and then you get fired later. So um, check out that video on making a portfolio. Number seven, get industry-specific experience. Companies usually prefer that you have experience in their industry, not just, you know, experience in general doing um, data analytics. Um, And so... You really need to actually get the skills necessary to get the job done. And you can do this simply by um, working for free or getting a initial job that kind of uh, gets you that experience. It may not be the best paying job, but um, you can do it that way. Or you can do a, a hybrid approach where you're an intern or you can freelance um, and get that experience. Build that portfolio. Because then you can speak to real clients, real work you've done, and show irrefutable evidence that you actually know what you're doing. And so industry-specific experience is really helpful. I know it's hard to hop industries, but especially if you're starting out, choosing the right industry ahead of time can be super useful. Okay, number eight. And before I get to eight, I would recommend you all to subscribe and leave a like if you like these videos for more content like this. We even have a free email newsletter where I share more exclusive tips and you get a free guide on five signs um, that uh, a marketing data analyst job is the right job for you. Okay, so number eight is look for jobs at smaller companies, not big ones. I hinted at this earlier, um, but here's where I want to reveal that secret overlook subtype of a data analyst role, and that is called a marketing data analyst. There's different names for this. Some call it a marketing analytics engineer or digital analyst, but they're essentially a type of data analyst that's less programmatic and less heavy on programming languages, and more so just about connecting marketing tools like Google Analytics or to other things, Hotjar, Facebook ads, 
and then visualizing that data in a dashboard for companies. It's a rapidly growing subtype of a data analyst that I highly recommend. It's the job I've had for three years. Um, and then before that, I worked uh, five years at a performance marketing agency as a strategist. But I highly recommend you check out that job title. And small companies are the easiest way that you can like get in on these. A lot of smaller agencies are starting to uh, post jobs for these roles when they didn't exist before. Um, so that's one easier way. Rather than trying to fight hundreds of people at a big company like Google, you have less competitors that are competent when you apply to a job. And I think it's an easier win. Number nine is use LinkedIn to network and get a human to human interaction with people at your uh, co target company versus just applying through the front door. So this is something that um, I want to hat tip uh, to Ramit Sethi, who taught me this when I purchased his course. And um, I was able to verify it myself. And that was this idea that most people get their jobs through networking. You still have to be competent and have the skills. Uh, but on top of that, to get that edge over the other people who are competent, um, it's about knowing the right people. And although I had no connections, you know, coming from immigrant uh, parents, um, I was able to go, you know, go and do over 100 informational interviews off LinkedIn, um, just reaching out, mass reaching out to a lot of people I admired in different fields. And through that, I was often able to network and have a real conversation, sometimes just over the phone for 10 minutes or five minutes with someone at a target company I was applying to. And um, that was the start of building a relationship. Sometimes all I needed, but you know, uh, I arguably should have done more sometimes um, to for them to say, hey, let me just put in a good word for you or let me make sure your, your application uh, gets seen. And so um, a small but very important piece to the puzzle to get you over that edge. And then number 10 is um, how this this last tip is how I got my job as a marketing data analyst. And that is join entry level jobs, join jobs that don't pay as well or are internships or aren't really exactly where you were want to be. Um, so five years before I for five years before I, I had my current job as a marketing data analyst, I worked, applied and worked and got this job as at a performance marketing agency where I did SEO, Google ads, pay-per-click, Facebook ads, um, a lot of standard digital marketing strategy stuff. And because of that, I was able to uh, grow a large portfolio and a lot of experience working with over a hundred different clients in various different industries. And I just saw a lot of hands if, to use a poker analogy. And that helped build my skill sets and experience to a level where um, when I talked about it um, and when I demonstrated my skills, because they'll sometimes have you do exercises, it was irrefutable. It was obvious that I actually knew what I was talking about. And that gave me the edge to actually get the job. So once again, that big point of like employers are really just looking for irrefutable proof because they don't want to waste time hiring someone incompetent. You have to hit that nail on the head and showcase it in everything you apply and you'll do a great job. So thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Check out my email list and I'll see you in the next video.